through today some stuff that uh, is based around, I guess, lessons that I talk to uh, various sports clubs about, um, that I talk to sports departments about, state sports associations, that sort of stuff, even some individual athlete chats that I have, uh, that I think will hopefully be helpful to either the stuff that you're delivering directly as part of a club um, or uh, delivering the message on to uh, the clubs that you help coordinate and help work with in, in sports and, and really anything in social media, hopefully. Um, so I'll just start sharing start my screen uh, for the first sort of period. I'll go through some slides and and then after that, uh, there should be plenty of time for questions. But um, I believe you should be able to ask questions throughout. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm, when I'm sharing my screen how that works, but... Um, uh, tomorrow I might be able to help us out if any questions come through on the chat. I'm happy for you to, to call them out uh, as we go along as well. Sorry, Ryan, I failed to uh, mention that in my housekeeping. Please, okay. everybody, use the um, the chat function. If you've got any questions as we go throughout, if we're able to address them as we go through, we'll do that, Ryan. Otherwise, we'll just um, we'll address them at the end. Sounds good. So let me just share. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing a, a mostly blue slide here. Um, and the way that I've kind of framed this chat is uh, the way that you might be able to use social media um, to communicate value and tell stories in 2020. Uh, and and that's the way I like to like the way that's the way I like to think about using your social media platforms and, and your comms channels in general. Um, communicate your value. Uh, and, and tell stories. And the reason I put the, the in, in 2020 there, I don't usually um, specify a year, but uh, it, it's a very strange time. I'm sure you're all going through it, obviously, as well. Um, and, and some things you can do a little bit differently this year as opposed to uh, what you might have done in the past. And there's also a bit more attention on how you show up in the digital space and online um, as opposed to being you know, mixed with physical, which is not actually there at the moment. So stuff to think about. Tamara said uh, um, the uh, comms advisor for the sport team at RMIT, um, sit in the student communications team, uh, but work really closely uh, with Sally and her team at RMIT Sport. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to, as I sort of alluded to at the start, um, help them communicate both from the uni, but also on the ground at, you know, the last couple of Div, Div 1 and Div 2 nationals. So um, have been around the uni sport for a while uh, over the last few years and, and, and love getting a chance to, to be around the around the group. So my background is, um, is, is predominantly sports communications. So uh, working with uh, state sports associations, national leagues, clubs, um, athletes, and either ones that are on coming up, um, a lot of time spent with student athletes that were going off to play college sports in places like North America, as well as uh, professional athletes that were either looking to increase their online presence on social media um, to get you know, sponsorship, uh, to help them compete at their next qualifying tournament, or to get media opportunities um, to showcase their sponsors that they've got, or, or just build their name a little bit. Uh, or ones that were, or professional athletes that were coming to the end of their careers and looking to um, maximise that time in the spotlight or take advantage of that spotlight that was still on them uh, while they were still in their sport. So um, mixed with uh, working with students. So uh, when I first started at RMIT, I was teaching uh, public relations at RMIT. Um, previous to that, I was teaching at Deakin uh, comms and PR. So I've had a good mixture of university students and sports, so uh, I feel like there's, there's there's some lessons in here that are translatable to not just students in, in terms of their athletics and, and the clubs, but also to um, you know people working in that environment as well and, and thinking about their um, their profile as students and, and people. So some of the things we're going to focus on, I guess, in this in this slide section is online identity and reputation, uh, which which goes hand in hand with everything you're doing with social media. Uh, communicating your value and communicating your values. So what's great about you? Why should someone choose you as a club? Why should someone choose you as someone they want to be a part of? Why should someone choose you as a, a, a platform or a, 
uh, an account that I want to follow? And then what are your values and are you talking about those? And social media storytelling, um, you know, stories is one of those words in social media at the moment because every platform is getting stories. Um, you know, the, uh, Instagram probably the most obvious, um, but there's a real chance to tell great stories with your social media and i think that's really important for all clubs um, and sports departments to be thinking about and then finally i guess tips and tactics it's it's probably something that there'll be more um around the questions you have more than anything but just some stuff that i see to make the most out of your efforts if you are going to be doing this stuff as a club or as a sports organization let's make the most out of your efforts on social so it's all about the spotlight i think um you know, be ready for that spotlight. Uh, when the spotlight of attention hits you on social, um, you want to make sure that you're showing up the best way possible. So uh, for an individual, uh, that might be the day before a job interview. Um, people might look at your social media. For a sports club, it might be O week. It might be um, the first couple of weeks of a season. Um, it might be related to other things that are going on at uni, like a club's day. Uh, but, but be ready for that spotlight. Because when the attention shines on you, it shines pretty bright. People are looking, people are excited, uh, but they also can move on pretty quickly. And so some of the things I get uh, clubs and individuals to, to think about is uh, the, these three things that I kind of have been teaching for, for years to kind of get people to think about the whole process through uh, awareness, which is understanding your audience online, um, understanding that it's generally much bigger than you think it is. It's generally evolving um, and fairly or not. The people that are looking at your page are making up assumptions about what you're all about. Um, that's just the way it goes. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we've stumbled across uh, a, a, an Instagram or Facebook page and made up assumptions in our head about what these guys are all about, these girls are all about. And the next part is action. So this is where we get to you know, start taking action to become known for what you actually want to be known for not just existing online, like taking some action and saying, you know, we're just not the, um, you know, the hockey club. Uh, we actually are many, many, many things. And these are our values. And we show up and we talk about them and we communicate them online. And then finally, advantage. So building that positive reputation. There's so much potential with the online space to showcase what's great about you, um, to showcase your community, to showcase your values, uh, to build that positive reputation and actually get opportunities. And so for a club that may be actually um, getting sponsorship, it may be getting members to choose you over another club, um, getting people to sign up for your programs, getting people to come to your camps, whatever it might be, that's, that's the way we like to think about it. When I say you decide what you're known for, um, I think that's what's so exciting about your online presence on social media and your strategies that you implement. Whatever you want to uh, be seen as, you can help guide that. You know, nobody decides that for you. So it's based on what you put out there. It's based on what you show others that's important to you. Um, I'd say, look, I, I know most people, I've got his name on there, but I, I think obviously most people would know uh, Dylan Alcott in some capacity. Um, and he's an athlete that not only I look at as someone that showcases himself um, as an inspiring individual in person, um, but I like to use him as an example of, uh, for any organization, a business to an individual, to a club, uh, to showcase the fact that he knows what he wants to be known for and the things that he's passionate about, even though they change and evolve um, or the things that he's doing outside of the online space change and evolve as they have from when I first met him as a, as a, as a basketball um, athlete to now, you know, dominating tennis, dominating many, many facets of, of the things he tries. Uh, he's evolved and it's always been clear what was most important to him, what were his values. Uh, if someone stumbled across his social media pages, they got what he was all about. And I think that's the lesson, you know, in a lot of this stuff is, if someone takes the time to check out what you've what you've got going on, are you making sure that what's relevant, what's important, is found, um, and you are talking about it? But why is this so important? Really, uh, the main thing people think they're looking at the real you on social. You know, people think that that, that what you put on your posts. Um, is what you care about, is what you're all about. Uh, whether that's the club president, um, that, that someone clicks through and finds their page and all of a sudden, you know, they're the, they're the president of a club, 
uh, they're the captain of a team. Someone goes to their Instagram page and doesn't see any reference to the team or the club, the university, the thing they're supposedly so passionate about and steering on their own personal social media accounts. You know, it's not in their bio. It's not in any photos. It's not their profile picture. And there's obviously extremes and people that go the other way and talk about this stuff a lot. But people think that what they find on their social is what, what's important to you. And so it goes, same goes with, with uh, clubs. And for clubs particularly, you know, does the stuff that's starting to show up on your social media, the stuff that you're talking about and you will be talking about or have been talking about, does it reflect that COVID-19 landscape? Um, or are the photos still all physical practices? Um, does it look like people could still be getting involved? Or does it showcase that you've, you've shifted to, you know, Zoom trivia meetings, um, virtual catch-ups, you know, challenges amongst the team to keep to keep the morale up, um, showcasing people that are back in the gym, showcasing um, throwbacks to when, you know, you could get out there together as a team. So th th that's something to think about too. It should look a little different. The other thing that, the other reason it's so important is it's often the first and only impression that somebody gets of you. So it's that one chance when they when they go across the stall at O week, um, see oh oh they've got a uh, they've got a soccer club. I'm gonna check them out on Instagram, and they don't find any posts, or they find three or four posts from a few years ago, and people move on, um, or they they find a post, uh, they find the page on social, and there's 12 photos and there's no female representation at all in any of the photos and you may have a female team um, but the first impression is that that's not something that's a priority to your to your club or you might not have much information or it might be all out, out, outdated information on your pages so talk about the most important stuff first and make sure that's that's front of mind i'll go a bit further into that in the next slide Another, hopefully, and, and hopefully you can see with these. I'm, I'm trying. I know it's really generic the stuff I'm talking about, and, and and but but I feel like the audience here is either going to be relaying it to many many individuals, which makes it difficult to be specific, or you're all in different, slightly different situations. So I'm trying to keep it generic, trying to keep it stuff that is helpful for for all of you. Um, and the other thing I like to think about is everything you're putting out there online. It's either helping or hurting your goals. It's either helping you move towards. Um, a powerhouse club or to get signups for a new team or a school holiday program, or it's moving you away from that. Um, and that's probably more of an individual personal brand, uh, individual athlete, individual coach, individual team leader, president, club captain. Um, but are you showcasing your values, your individual or your uh, club values through those posts or is what you're putting out there actually setting you back? There's a, there's a, it can only go both ways. It goes one or the other way. And so who will the opportunities, members, um, sign-ups, you know, fans go to? It's the people that are talking about their values, people that are talking about the things they want to be known for, um, people are talking about the positive, positive content, showcasing uh, the environment that they're in, building up their community. It's a competitive world, and that just doesn't go for um, an athlete you know, battling someone else for sponsorship or a leadership position or a scholarship um, that goes to clubs, um, particularly when you're a university club and you're dealing with um, suburban similar clubs. Um, those opportunities uh, to capture someone's attention in that first impression, to make sure you're, you're ready for the spotlight are being lost and gained every day. So it's something we really want to focus on. So I touched on the last slide, the first impression. And I think it's every. I think everyone can kind of get um, that picture, that first impression in their head of of, of meeting someone for the first time. Um, I, I like to get clubs or individual athletes uh, or students to think about if they only had their only pitch. They never got to meet someone in person. They never got to talk to someone at an interview. They never got to talk to them at a club stay behind a counter. Um, if all they had that first impression was they got to hand over their social media handles and their pages would they be happy with what they were putting forward whether that's as an individual or as a, as a club in general so there's ways that you can take care of that first impression as much as possible and the way i like to think about that is um from you know my old uh you know journalism subjects was we always used to talk about that uh, inverted pyramid which is that upside down triangle where you talk about the most important stuff first 
uh, and then the next most important stuff, and then the next most important stuff, and, and further down the chain, to you're talking about the least important stuff. Um, if you're thinking about it like a, uh, a newspaper article, it's that headline, it's the image, it's the first sentence, and then as you go further down, uh, the, the next few pa paragraphs are less important. Um, think about it like an email, it's the subject line, it's the image you choose to go along with it. Uh, with social media, I like to get um, I like to get clubs to think about what's at first couple of scrolls like through an Instagram page. If I'm landing on a club page or an athlete page, what's in the bio? Uh, are they talking about the most relevant information? Are they talking about their values? Are they talking about um, showcasing an easy way for people to get involved? Next, the next layer down, if we look at this Sam Kerr example, it's very clear what's important to her. Um, and the way, way I like to look at it is what's in the bio. You know, some clubs don't have them. Some club presidents don't say they're club presidents of a club in their personal bios. Uh, coaches, the same thing. Um, what, if you can see by this next line down, the highlights, it's very clear that uh, Sam has some things that rotate through there that are that next level down. You know, are, are important things to her, Chelsea, Nike, the Matildas, Chicago, her, her team in the States, and, and Foster Dogs, which is often the first the first scrolling through highlight there. Um, that's an opportunity for people to play around and a strategy that might be implemented to, all right, let's utilize our Instagram highlights more than we ever have. Highlights are coming to uh, many platforms. Certainly stories are, um, and highlights will be not far behind. The other thing you want to think about is, like I talked about the example before, is how many, how far do you have to scroll through to see someone who looks like you, to see someone who um, is something that you're expecting to find on this page, or that you heard that was po heard that was possible, um, or you heard uh, these guys are guys or girls are all about. Don't make people dig too deeply. So, what's in the last nine to twelve photos on your Instagram feed? Is it a good representation? Because that may be that first impression. That's all you get. Quick look at the bio um, and a couple of flicks down with their thumb to get through the first 12 to 15 photos. Is that still reflecting um, what you want to be known for? Have you brought your values through in those photos? Are there happy, smiling faces? Does it look like you can be part of a community? Does it look like um, things are happening? It's not dormant hasn't been no post for a year these types of things it's that taking care of that first impression across all platforms not just not just instagram but i like the instagram analogy because of the just the structure of the, the top of the page so social media storytelling there's a mixture of posts here um and you know i could have grabbed any number i've I've got a link at the end of the slides. I've collected this stuff for years of, of positive examples of social media use through athletes and sports and clubs um, and I just want just wanted to go through a few of these because sometimes um, it takes a post to kind of see what you can do and that it's not that daunting and um, you can talk about values and you can get messages across through your content that doesn't take a whole lot of planning uh, and you know strategy it's just what's important to us and can I show gratitude um, and maybe motivate and inspire some other people just through some of my content. So I've got a few examples I'll read through here. You probably can't see them very clearly because they're quite small on my screen too now. Um, so the top left one is from a, uh, an athlete, a, a young basketballer. Uh, I just, I just want to read the, the text that went alongside the post because the text is often something that's forgotten. Um, the photos are terrific. Um, but what are we saying in those captions in those first couple of sentences too? I'm so grateful to be able to represent my country alongside my sisters. A massive thanks goes to my family, teammates, coaches, and everyone who's cheered us on from home. I'm very proud of the steps we took as a team and the fight we showed against all odds. We'll be back. And a little silver medal emoji uh, and an Australian flag. Something as simple as that coming from an athlete in a team, a coach, a club president, uh, a player, uh, someone connected, a staff member. Just think about what shows through in that just in that one you know paragraph um massive thanks to my family teammates coaches we're proud of the steps we took uh we showed fight against the odds we'll be back you know that that one piece of content um showcases uh teamwork gratitude um you know spirit 
there's just so many so many positive lessons and and, and more so more than that i'm sure you all have a, a bunch in your head reading it um that, that show through in a social media post it tells a story and it tells a story so much more than just a, a game result it talks about a culture uh it talks about all the positive things that are going on behind the scenes RMIT Outdoors Club, and again, just to screenshot this one, um, obviously like across RMIT clubs more than other clubs, the message and the simple story being told here with uh, the updating of their of their um, their logo, the updating of their logo during Pride Week, um, such a small thing sometimes, and sorry, not not a small thing, such a small thing to change, uh, but so impactful in many ways, I think. And I, and I stumbled across it and I thought, you know, that's, that's telling a really clear story just with a changing a profile picture during a key moment where it's important to a lot of people. Um, it gives that first impression. It's the first thing you see. That profile picture really stands out. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, someone scrolling through looking for a club and looking for somewhere to connect finds a community really quickly, an inclusive and accepting community. Um, so that was a really powerful one for me as well. Bottom left one. Uh, Mitch Creek, another basketball player, um, at a school holiday camp. And, you know, I think about this stuff when I think about, you know, some of the clubs that have imports, some of the, um, you know, some of the elite athletes that, that are in these teams and clubs and, and unis. Uh, a post like this, and, and again, it's the smiling faces, it's the kids. It's not, it's a post from him, but it's not all about me. It's not, look at me, how great I am. The comment goes along with it. Uh, I was once you. I hope you get to experience all that's possible in this world. If you believe in yourself, you know, again, what does that tell people about Mitch? Um, it says in my mind, so many things, I'm sure you, you would have your own thoughts too, but um, so much more than a, a simple um, up, a simple post about thanks for everyone coming to my school holiday camp. You know, these are the types of things that you can, these are the stories you can tell with social media, by just um, thinking it through and thinking if you're leading with your values, you're leading with, what you want to be known for. RMIT Hockey Club alongside here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be overly RMIT from here just because they're the kind of ones that I've gathered um, being across them. Uh, not that I deal with the clubs that much. I don't get a lot of input with the clubs, um, the RMIT clubs, but I have had a chance to speak to you know quite a few of them over different times and some of them cross over with nationals as well. So the next one here, Are You OK Day? Now, maybe, maybe all the clubs in your unis um, posted about Are You OK Day our Are You OK Day provides a suite of social media posts that you can just grab and post. Um, but what I really liked about this one is that story. Again, it's taking it to that next level. And even though fantastic if every club posts something about Are You OK Day, but RMIT's uh, hockey club has taken it to the next step and really personalized it. And it was so eye-catching to me, the post. Again, I had to grab it. Um, it talks about what they pride themselves on. Even just the caption, RMIT Hockey Club prides itself on being an open, caring, and supportive club. 365 days of the year, bringing people of all walks of life together. And it goes on. And the photo of, of you know, of, of the two players embracing, I just thought that was a really powerful story told through social. And hopefully you're getting the, the message of there's a variety of ways to do these things, um, which is what I love about it all. So what I like to, and before I forget, what I like to get um, clubs to do and it might be a task that you set them um, or if you're in a club or you, you set your club is you know what are the five to ten things that uh, we want to be known for that are our values that if someone stumbled across our page um, we want to make sure that they get very very quickly or they understand is it gratitude is it inclusive um, is it supportive is it uh, passionate you know are we um, health and fitness there's a variety of things that it might be and it'll be similar and different to, to different clubs. Um, we want to make sure that you've got a list of those five to 10 things and people aren't searching too hard to find those things represented in your content. Don't make people dig too deeply to, to get what you really care about. Um, just a couple of other examples. You know, these are RIT clubs, the, the women's big V team on the left and the women's footy team on the right. Um, the left is you know, a, a post they put together during isolation uh, and, and we shared across social. Um, really creative, really fun. You, you may have seen similar things. You may have done similar things with your clubs. They didn't make up the, 
they didn't make up doing this. You know, they, they saw it somewhere as well and, and did it, but I think they did it really well. But more so than the message of, uh, you know, stay home so we can get back on the court. It just shows togetherness. It shows team spirit. It shows coordination. Um, smiling faces in photos is always much more positive than, you know, blank faces. Uh, I love seeing student faces in posts. I love seeing people in posts more than a logo, uh, more than someone's back, more than text. Um, it just helps draw people in to the club and to the story. And I was really, really thought they did a fantastic job on that one. And the one on the right, again, is just, um, you know, it was a bunch of challenges that the women's footy team set themselves and shared on social. It just helped people stay connected. And I think that's probably something that all clubs are going through at the moment is how do we get people to stay connected? How do we keep them engaged? And I'm sure I've got no doubt that you've been rolling up similar things, but it's just a collection here. And, and when I started gathering them together, um, it, it looked really impactful. Um, a lot of outdoors, a lot of keeping active, a lot of sharing and a lot of commenting back and forth. So um, some really, really great ways that they can carry on, not just in this COVID landscape, but carry on post COVID and when we're back um, on the fields and courts. So um, putting the story in stories, I, I, I don't want to forget. Uh, a, so, uh, sorry, I don't want to forget. I, I want to remind everyone just about the power of, Instagram stories, even Snapchat stories still, Facebook stories, stories are coming to LinkedIn, stories are coming to every platform. Um, and in the past, they were a bit of a, uh, not, commit, not, not undervalued, but underappreciated potentially. Um, but the way that social media is moving and the, the how do I say it, uh, the willingness of people to, share so much more um to share more on their stories than they would on their feed of their social media posts um it really is one that i i, I is obviously is growing uh, massively and it's not to be overlooked when you're planning your social media strategies so um could the club be taken over have their instagram story taken over for the day by um the coach or the um one of the students within the club could they take over the Instagram stories and do a day in the life of their, um, you know, their studies and their, their athleticism and their playing. Uh, could an elite athlete that's involved do an Instagram takeover? Um, could you simply just show more behind the scenes and make sure you're adding that to your highlights on your club's page? Just so the great things that happen aren't missed. You know, if you have a, if you do get to get back together, take some Instagram stories and put it into a highlight. Um, hopefully people kind of get what that means. Um, if you do have uh, an event or you're off to nationals, um, this is obviously stuff that we did at nationals, RMIT, across different times. And the re reason I have it in the one slide is because I'd already had it in the slide. Um, but but some of the things that stand out to, to me are the, those faces um, and the names. You know, are you introducing people? Are you hearing from students themselves? Um, again, it, it's more hearing from students, hearing from athletes, less less text. Um, less pressure on them to to be perfect, and uh, I think it helps people connect. Um, and and yeah, I really enjoy that that side of things. So, so don't discount stories. Um, you know, yeah, I don't know about your different club pages, but but certainly RMIT gets a, many more views on stories than they do on on feed posts. So the content you can create again. I've, I've mentioned some of this stuff, but you know, let's. This is, this is, again, relatively generic, but don't forget about written content. Um, images and visual always over-index and always capture that eye through a very crowded social media space. Um, audio, too. And, and like I said with stories, it doesn't have to be perfect. People you know, not posting or being inactive on social media because they don't have the perfect photo, it's sub so subjective, you know? Um, then what's the perfect photo to you? Might it be the same for someone else? The video? that you, you had shot that on your phone, you don't think it's good enough to post, even though there's an amazing insight or quote or show some great spirit or community because it's not done on a um, proper video camera edited in Premiere, then you don't post it. I, I think there's a missed opportunity there. So get that stuff out there, I think, because um, it's perfect. It might not be perfect to you, it's maybe perfect to someone else. Say it with a selfie. Um, I'm a huge fan of selfies. You know, Like I said, I'm, I love seeing um, smiling, happy faces on posts. 
Uh, selfies don't have to be all about you in the club. Um, they can be you with someone else, lifting up a teammate, lifting up, celebrating a teammate's birthday, celebrating a teammate back from injury, um, celebra- celebrating a teammate's achievements or accomplishments, showing gratitude, um, helping as opposed to hurting, you know, the culture, and then using the the post content, the text, as a place to tell the story, like we saw with RMIT there, or we saw with Mitch Creek in that in that post on Instagram, and leverage it across channels. So this goes back to that. If you are, if you work in a sports club, if you work in sports in general, you're generally wearing multiple hats. Um, you're doing many jobs, and comms and social is generally not your only job. Uh, so make the most of it when you do it. If you are creating for, um, you know, TikTok, uh, make sure you use that on your Instagram story. Make sure you upload that as a Facebook video, and make sure you put it on your Twitter or wherever else you might exist online. Um, if you are going to create it, save it and utilize it across different channels. Um, quantity and quality of written there. Uh, I think that the, then this may be a question coming soon, but you can't you can't flood the feed. You can't overwhelm people with content. Um, you know, so it's not one or the other. It's um, just just put stuff out there and learn what's working, um, and it'll resonate with different people at different times. But I, I'm trying to avoid sort of that inaction and that not posting. So, you know, maybe a club, um, maybe an individual, maybe the club president might have their own niche Instagram, TikTok, Facebook page based around their club, based around their passion for their sport. And that can be a launching pad for a lot of this stuff as well. Um, you know, does the club have a, t- a presence on TikTok? You know, that, that's very, that may be difficult now to create content or not on it um, based on the fact that you're not really out there and about with each other and competing, um, you know, or is there a niche Instagram page just for some part of the club, um, you know, that can really dig into uh, showcasing what's great about what you've got going on. If you're an outdoors club that, you know, does six to 10 different things, could there be a niche, um, you know, caving or hiking club, you know, page that, you can direct people to through your main Instagram page or through your other channels, but it gives you a chance to showcase that amazing um, part of your club through a separate page. So just think, things to think about, and I'm sure different clubs have different um, ways they can do things. You don't want to you don't want to separate them too much, but um, if, if you're pointing people to something that's a really niche thing, uh, that, that's an opportunity too. And so don't, and and don't forget the bigger picture too. So quite often when I talk to uh, students in clubs. Um, athletes they forget about linkedin um you know is the fact that you're in a club on your linkedin is the fact that you are the president you are the coach you are um, working in as a volunteer um interning in the club is that on your linkedin and are you posting about that stuff linkedin i'm sure a lot of people on the call get now is looking a lot more like facebook than it ever has um, and there's an opportunity there because not only can clubs talk to um, get in front of fellow staff at the, at the uni. They can get in front of um, different people from around the country in, related to their sport, alumni in the university, maybe looking to um, give back or support in some way. LinkedIn is a really undervalued, uh, undervalued tool for you know, student athletes at the moment, clubs, uh, lots of different lots of different places. Really, um, it's a terrific it's a terif- terrific place to showcase, particularly when certainly if you are treasurer of a club you want that to be on your linkedin um you want to be you want that to be the thing that separates you from all the different um, people that apply for jobs in sport or apply for jobs in your industry the fact that you've interned at the local club the fact that you went to nationals and and did did this volunteer role or that you were part of this team that um, won a championship um that stuff may just be the thing that separates you from the other graduates separates you from the other students the other applicants um so tell that story. Don't hide the good stuff you've been involved in. Ryan, I might just ask you a quick question yeah. that's popped up before oh, sorry, you move yeah. on from there, um, which is just around that utilising um, content across channels, so making yep. sure you – the question was around do you use the same post on Instagram and Facebook or do you try and keep them different? Yeah, well, that's, that's, a, that's a personal choice, I think. Um, Instagram and Facebook, it can probably be pretty similar. Um, 
they they both work relatively similarly. Obviously, they're they're, they're owned by the same company and they they run through the same platform. Um, what I would say is you, there's no guarantee. So if you've got an amazing piece of content, an amazing photo, amazing video that you've got on face that you've got on Instagram, um, just because you want to look like you're posting something different on different platforms, it may you may just miss someone on Facebook seeing that, that great video. Uh, I'd be less concerned about people seeing it twice than people not seeing it then and more concerned about people not seeing it all it at all, if that makes sense. Obviously Facebook you can add links and stuff in, which is really um, helpful. Um, but yeah, I'd be less concerned I'm not too concerned with people sharing the same content across different channels because the audiences are different. The, you know, your your followers on Instagram are not your followers on Twitter. Um, there may be some crossover, but there's not. It's not 100% the same. So um, I'd be less concerned with that. If you want to, um, I've only got a couple of slides left. So if some, that, that question asker wants to dive in a bit more, uh, happy to do that in a minute. Things to remember, and and again, this goes to making the most of your efforts. If you are going to do it. How can you leverage it? Um, the visual, as I talked about, you know, when you're doing a video on Instagram, what's the thumbnail? What's the photo that shows up in your feed? Remembering that when that first impression comes, people looking at your feed, did you choose just a, a blurry face or the back of someone in a video when you posted on the feed? Or did you choose something that um, showcased the high five between two teammates that again shows spirit and teamwork? Uh, mentioning and tagging in posts, um, particularly in stories, you never know who might engage and who might share it, particularly when you're talking about um, large clubs, large sports leagues, uh, universities in general, uni sport, um, you know, there's, there's associated teams and clubs, you know, state, state sports association, uh, the rival team you're playing against, tagging, mentioning, it all helps with engagement. It all helps get your message out a little bit further. Remembering hashtags, um, not so much to gather views because it can get lost a little bit in that. But I like it when clubs and individuals use hashtags that showcase their values. Um, you know, it might be a, a theme or a, uh, a saying within the team that you can add to every post. Again, it just reiterates what's most important. And if people come across it, they kind of get that you care about this stuff and that's important to you. Uh, think about the differences across the platforms. Again, you know, that's similar to that question that was asked. Um, but, but try things, test things. Uh, if you don't think um, what you've got on Instagram translates um, on Twitter, just cutting and pasting, then um, try some different things, you know, um, adjust your content if you need to. And don't forget about interactive elements for engagement. So uh, going back to stories, over overwhelmingly, you know, you put a poll on there, stickers, questions, votes, just give people something to connect with. And even so something as small as every day asking a question or once every Wednesday, every Wednesday asking a question on your Instagram about, you know, what's people's thoughts on X, Y, or Z. Um, what's people's favorite moments from this, you know, um, event or this game, voting on polls, it just gives them another thing that helps them feel connected. Even if it's just pressing a button on the screen, it gives them a vote, it makes them feel heard. Um, it gives them an opportunity to ask a question, ask it, you know, um, submit an answer. And it's just another thing to connect people. Uh, so, and ultimately, this is the end. Uh, have fun, you know. It, you don't want someone managing your social media who doesn't like social or doesn't feel like being social or doesn't think that this is fun because the content will reflect that. Um, find someone that's willing to give it a crack. And like I've said before, um, more so than being that perfect content in, in your eyes, uh, someone that's willing to give it a go will, will be able to create a much more engaging page. Um, I have a lot of fun on this stuff. Uh, luckily, luckily enough, I get to do it some for work and some for personal. Um, so. Down the bottom here, I've got a couple of resources. Um, so I collect, as I said to you, I collect social media examples of athletes, mostly athletes, but in a variety of different ways from unis to, to pro athletes um, using social in a positive way to give examples. And I, I, obviously you can't click this through here. Oh, maybe you can, I'm not sure. Uh, if you can, that's pretty cool. But if you can't, I'll, I'll share the slides. Um, and the other one is, is uh, a friend of mine works with fan engagement, works with sport engagement, um, Blair Hughes, if you haven't seen his content, uh, he's got some great ideas for keeping um, fans, as in, you know, members as well as people that may support your team and your community engaged during COVID-19, but there's some, some great crossover there as well um, for non-COVID times. So I will stop sharing now and come back, <laughs> come back to you all. And 
thanks for thanks for listening. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm feel free to shout out now or however you want to whoever you want to add them. I'm happy to have a chat. Yes, if anybody has any questions, please um, please take yourself either off mute or off mute or type it into the chat function. Got nothing coming through. I guess I'd probably just had one. You've obviously referred through your presentation, Ryan, and thank you for that. That was that was really great. Um, but you've and you've um, nicely referred to the current situation, the COVID situation that everybody's obviously going through, and people are probably taking this time to rethink social media strategy, social media strategies because this is a time to stay engaged via those platforms with. Um, club members and that sort of thing. You referred to some uh, RMIT things, but is, has there been any specific or a social media campaign that you've come across that's worked quite well in terms of keeping, you know, whether club members engaged during this time? Have you come across something that's been, you know, that's been a little bit left of field, but it, it's worked quite well? Uh, yeah, look, I think the ones that have worked um, it's been funny because it's gone in kind of waves and I'm sure everyone has experienced this looking at how students have kind of been evolving and initially there was a lot of um, dead air in terms of content um, and then everyone kind of moved to uh, fitness challenges across social. I'm sure it popped up on everyone's feeds, um, you know, and and yes, so, so for me, one was those fitness challenges that kind of got people to um, get active uh, so, so they're, they're the ones for me that, that started it off and maybe challenges amongst teams. Um, some of the stuff I wasn't privy to, but I've heard about some of the, you know, the the private Facebook groups, um, the private Zoom chats, um, the weekly catch-ups and check-ins, because uh, one some of the clubs that I've been really impressed with at RMIT have been the ones that have continued to have these, um, you know, behind-the-scenes catch-ups. So weekly Zoom sessions where they have some trivia, um, they have some fun, they have a chat. Um, but also hearing from the leaders in those clubs that have reached out um, to people that, that they just hadn't heard from, you know, and so it's showing care and and they've sort of, you know, someone was a bit quiet or didn't turn their camera on during the Zoom chat. So um, we made sure uh, someone checked in with them the next couple of days. So just that check in, uh, I think, is really powerful. And obviously that's not seen by potential and new members. Um but the, the way to the way to tie that together would be, you know, once in a while screenshotting that, you know, Zoom screen, uh, posting it on social. It's great to kind of keep connected with the team and the club. Um, you know, you can still be involved with the club. They're the kind of things that have stood out to me as being um, specific things that have, uh, you know, help keep clubs connected and, and a community there, even though they're not public for all to see. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you for that. We have had uh, one other question come in from Sarah at UNSW yeah, cool. um, saying, how regularly would you recommend clubs post on Facebook and social media in general? When does it when does it become too much? Um, I don't think there's really a, a too much button. There's not there's no there's, sorry, a too much point. Um, it's it's I think you want to be trying to think about are we adding value here with what we're posting? Um, are we either showcasing something that's, that's positive and uplifting about the club um, or are we, um, you know, yeah. So I think that that would be the, that would be the thing. You can post as much as you like. Uh, I'd never want to discourage people from posting because more than anything, they do not post enough. Um, so post more, uh, post as much as you like. Uh, you're never going to be the only thing in people's feeds and you're going to spam them so much that that's all they see. Um, that's that's not going to be the case. So I would not be too concerned about it. I would always make sure, though, that you've got a purpose behind your post. Um, and if you're worried about that, then, you know, going back to those five, ten things you want your club to be known for are really important to make sure that you're on track with what you're posting. And because that, that, that would be the difference is if you're putting stuff out there that just has no real um, value, it just looks like um, it might be a photo with no context. Um, it might be a an inspirational it could be an inspirational quote but it has no connection back to the club with with text um 
that's what I'd be looking out for as opposed to, because if you are posting gold and you're posting things that people like, go for it. It's only going to help. Okay, great. Thanks for that. I haven't had any um, any other questions come through, so um, we might leave it there. But thank you so much for your time, Ryan. I really appreciate that. I took some really great uh, key learnings out of that. Awesome. Um, probably the main, I really like the point around um, not focusing on things having to be perfect. I think that's probably the stumbling block for a lot of uh, people, yeah. you know, no matter what your role is within a university or at a club. Um, so, you know, as you said, so long as something's got purpose behind it, um, get it out there. It's really yeah. a good message to get. Yeah, thanks. I can see another question come in about from Max. Um, I'll just oh. tell this one out. So within your clubs or universities, how do you control people that are posting appropriate content? Um, so I I can't control that. Um, uh, but And I'm not sure how Jack Arnold, who manages the sport clubs here at RMIT, um, in terms of the governance of the pages, I know that uh, they still have to be made aware when there are pages created. And presumably... Yeah, I don't know the, the government governance process behind it, but you would hope that um, you know it's being controlled by those who are in leadership positions within a club. Um, of course, there's always going to be the potential for something to pop up on social that isn't ideal. Um, so I think if you have a, a good social media policy or a, a guideline for club presidents, uh, for people that are in control of those pages, generally it can become it's pretty safe. Saying that, um, that doesn't control what people do on their own social media um, pages. Um, and I would always get, uh, whether it's coaches or leaders or presidents or staff, to reiterate that you're representing the university, um, you're representing something bigger than yourself. Um, and particularly when you are participating or, you know, wearing the jersey or wearing the uh, hoodie uh, of your university around and in post, um, it does have the potential to impact reputation. Uh, but again, I think overwhelmingly um, the content should and, and generally is is positive. You probably hit the nail on the head in that um, I don't, there'd be an assumption there that a num most universities would probably have um, a policy in place of some sort, but in terms of actually getting um, people to follow that, it's probably more about education, isn't it? like these these sort of things about what it, what are best practices and, and that sort of thing so that they can, um, you know, be educated in the right way to go about things. Yeah, and generally you find the people at the heads of clubs are really passionate about it. They don't want it to get shut down. They don't want there to be disciplinary issues. They don't want the page to be taken down. They don't want the post to cause drama. Um, so, you know, you should hopefully have some willing willing people to hear those hear those messages. Great. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thanks for those questions, guys. We'll yeah, um, we'll um, put a recording of this session on our website so that um, those that haven't been able to join today, um, if they want to share this message across other clubs, um, they can do. Um, but really appreciate your time today, Ryan. That was great. No worries. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for checking in. And, yeah, be sure to connect. I'm happy to chat to anyone about um, any questions. But, um, yeah, these, these slides hopefully sum it up and uh, uh, give you a good starting point. Fabulous. Thanks, everyone, for joining and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.